Yes, hello to you all once again and uh, welcome back to the latest episode of Classic Dirt Bike TV where of course we continue to discover more of those long lost off-road motocrossers from uh, back in the day. Now a quick hello here to all the brand new subscribers who have recently signed up since my last uh, video posting. I do hope you continue to find something here to entertain you with regards looking at these old uh, old school motocross uh, machines. Now also it's nice to see the subscribers uh, total uh, going up week on week and uh, thanks again to everybody out there for your continuing support of my channel and if these are the kind of uh, machines that you like to look at here on YouTube then uh, please uh, consider uh, subscribing uh, to my channel. Okay, so coming up next, we're going to go back to the Rob Hughes Classic Dirt Bike Collection. Now, you know that we've already featured many of Rob's uh, fantastic race machines here on CDB TV in the past. And this is just another couple of fantastic uh, machines that Rob has in his uh, collection. So without any further delay, let's jump straight into the video and take a look at this lovely pair of 1990 four-stroke CCMs. Now, if you're a regular visitor to my Classic Dirt Bike TV channel, then you'll have already seen many similar types of these Allen Clues CCMs from Rob Hughes's astonishing collection of British-made CCMs. And this pair of 1990 examples is another two beauties from Rob's uh, workshop. Now, these featured 1990 examples were, of course, uh, built soon after Alan Clues had taken back control of his beloved CCM empire in 1987 after he bought back the share that Armstrong had in the company years before. Because although Armstrong's financial input into the Clues company was very welcome at that time, their ultimate goal was to break into the more lucrative world of road racing and Armstrong were never really interested in developing these off-road motocross bikes, which is why Alan then decided to take back full control of his once great CCM uh, empire. Now for 1990, these relatively new designed motocrossers were a far cry from the CCMs of the past that were powered by those older BSA-based B50 engines that, of course, uh, put CCM on the world motocross map in that golden era of the 1970s. Now, these 1990 bikes had a brand new chassis, a modern style front and rear suspension system, and were now uh, powered, of course, by an almost unbreakable and powerful Austrian-built Rotax four-stroke engine. And also in 1990, as you'd expect, uh, there were works versions of these bikes, uh, which in that year were then uh, ridden by the great uh, Perry Leesk, uh, Greg Hansen, uh, Steve Howe, and even uh, Austin Clues himself was riding uh, one of these works bikes. And in actual fact, uh, one of the bikes featured here has Steve Howe's name on the bike seat, so that could possibly still even be uh, Steve Howe's old works bike that we're looking at here. Now, with regards to the engine for these 1990 race bikes, now CCM started uh, with a stock 500 Rotax four-stroke motor, and then they completely stripped it down and then rebuilt it uh, using uh, some of their own uh, technology. Now, firstly, the cylinder head was uh, reworked and uh, bigger 36mm valves were fitted, which were 2mm bigger than the standard size. And the barrel, again, had a Nicosil uh, bore instead of the usual steel liner. Uh, once more, the uh, crankshaft also was lightened and then rebalanced and the ignition system was also modified and the gearbox was changed from a 5-speed to a 4-speed and uh, the gearbox was also given a selector drum from the Rotax 2-stroke engine. Now, oil capacity of the motor was also increased and a big 36mm Makuni carburetor was fitted to handle the bike's fueling. And it's also said that uh, there were other 
certain modifications carried out on these engines, but uh, these were all kept on the secret list, which were only really known uh, to the bike's builders. Although essentially, these big 560cc motors with their twin port cylinder heads were still pretty awesome power plants and they were well suited to this brand new Clues motocrosser and variations of this Rotax engine would power CCM machines for the foreseeable future during the 1990s. Now when it comes to the bike's front suspension on these 1990 CCMs, it's uh, a very good strong set of white power upside down forks were fixed to the Clues uh, chassis and these uh, 4054 Protec units were a pretty decent uh, suspension system for the time as uh, they were very rugged and very tough and they did have a huge scope with regards their tuning and uh, making adjustments to their rebound and damping settings. But these upside down fork stanchions were certainly the latest technology in their day, although as you know, uh, off-road bike suspension systems are now regarded as a bit of a science in their own right when it comes to uh, motocross suspensions in 2022. And again, as you'd expect, modern style hydraulic disc brakes on the front here, which uh, were a far cry from the old school uh, drum brake systems that were fitted on the older uh, CCM race bikes of the past. Now at the rear, once again, we had a box section alloy swing arm with uh, once more a white power single shock suspension unit which uh, didn't have any linkage in between but uh, it simply bolted onto the chassis at the top and then onto the swing arm at the bottom. And again as per the bike's front wheel we have another hydraulic disc brake here on the rear and this twin cylinder Grimeca brake had uh, quite good stopping power for its time and uh, it was bolted onto the top of the swing arm just to try and keep it away from uh, mud and stones or other debris that may otherwise uh, damage it. But as I said, a decent brake and uh, much improved over the old school uh, drum brakes uh, of the past. And once again, these custom made CCM exhausts were tailor made for these bikes and uh, these tailpipes here, as you can see, were super strong and were bolted uh, straight uh, onto the chassis with these very substantial uh, mounting brackets and you'd have to be pretty cack handed to break uh, one of these tailpipes off the bike as they were bolted in at least three or four places and of course rubber mounted just to keep those vibrations uh, to a minimum. Although as I mentioned previously there, Steve Howe's name is on the seat of this bike who uh, was of course one of CCM's team riders back in that year and uh, this bike here could quite easily still be his race bike or even his standby machine that uh, Steve used as a backup and uh, once again on the bike's front number plate here it looks like Steve has also autographed the bike with his signature which uh, would endorse the fact that this is his actual uh, race bike. And uh, also for 1990, CCM were just like many other off-road motorcycle manufacturers of their day and they were also using these plastic fuel tanks on their bikes and this fuel cell here uh, usually held uh, just about enough gas for even the longest of race uh, motos because when that big 560 Rotax motor was working hard, it certainly uh, liked a drink. Now, once again, these 1990 Allen Clues uh, bikes were also fitted with these modern style race seats that uh, crept up the rear of the fuel tank in order that the rider could shift his weight anywhere on the bike just to help it make uh, sharper turns at the front or maybe by sitting at the back 
of the seat to keep that front end light when it was tracking over the whoops. But I have to say that uh, throughout the 1990s, CCM would go on to produce more of these brand new style motocrossers using variations of this chassis and Rotax engine to power their brand new range of motocross uh, racers. And in these modern times, it's not that easy these days to find examples of these 1990 uh, Allen Clues bikes in this kind of condition. And it's thanks again to Rob Hughes, who not only has one of these very rare bikes, but he has to make us all doubly jealous by having two of them in his uh, possession. Although I have to say that the entire history of the Alan Clues CCM empire is certainly a story of a British entrepreneur who had a vision to build uh, Britain's best ever four-stroke uh, motocross bike and from very humble beginnings with his first CCM in 1973, Alan Clues did go on to build some fantastic race bikes that not only looked good, but were good enough to take on anything that the Japanese could throw at them. And uh, just in case you're interested, the early history of CCM motorcycles right up until the early 1990s is available to read in this fantastic book by Bill Lawless, which uh, was called Rolling uh, Thunder, which uh, sadly is not that easy to come by nowadays, but uh, second-hand copies do appear on internet websites from time to time. But if you can lay your hands on a copy of this book, it documents all of the trials and tribulations of the Alan Clues Motorcycle Company. And inside the book, there's even a feature on the development of these 1990 bikes. And in this picture here, you can see Alan Clues on the left there with his son, Austin, discussing the layout of the 1990 bikes uh, brand new uh, chassis. But if you like your CCMs and you can manage to source a copy of the book, then it's certainly a riveting read. So once again, another very nice pair of 1990 CCMs from Rob Hughes's collection. And I have to say a very special thanks here to Rob for allowing me to film his uh, collection of Clues machines over the course of the two days that I was there. And uh, although we covered many examples of race bikes in that two day photo shoot, uh, would you believe that we still never captured every bike that Rob had uh, on the day. So who knows, maybe in the future we could uh, make the return journey to capture the remainder of this fantastic collection of classic CCMs. Well, there you have it. I do hope you enjoyed that walk around the latest pair of CCM race bikes from the Raw Pews classic dirt bike collection and uh, you may remember and seeing uh, some of Rob's uh, previous machines that we've featured here on uh, YouTube and that's just another pair of very nice Alan Clues bikes that Rob has in his compendium of old uh, race machines but we still have one or two bikes still to feature from Rob's collection coming up in the future so if you'd like to take a look at those then uh, please consider subscribing uh, to my channel. So coming up in my next video posting, we're going back to the Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show again. Now you may remember that we did a very small feature on this lovely Works Cotton EMX bike. Now this is a bike that was ridden by Pete Mathia in 1979 and we did say at that time that we would do a full more in-depth feature of this bike. So that's exactly uh, what we're going to be doing in my next video posting. So if you'd like to uh, take a look at this bike in more detail, then uh, please subscribe to my channel in order that you don't miss out on the details of this very uh, rare machine. But until then, everybody, of course, out there, still be very careful when you're out there riding those old vintage dirt bikes. And I hope to see you back here again very soon when we all get together once again to talk about more vintage iron right here on your number one and favourite classic dirt bike TV channel. <laughs>